my name is Catherine. Today, we're gonna take an AP computer science test. Now, I'm a software engineer, but I never took any of these AP computer science classes or even an AP math class. Now, the AP computer science test is actually pretty long. So I found this website called Tutorialfied, and they have a bunch of these quizzes that help you prepare for the test. I feel like if I can prepare for the test and I do well on these, that's that's the same as taking the test. So let's try it. There are a bunch of different topics here and I figure let's start with the first one, see how it goes. And if it feels too easy, we can try one of the other ones. So we'll click start quiz. What data type would best be used to record the number of people at a party? I love a party. Like it's a number, so that kind of boils it down to real or integer. And you can't have half a person, so we're going to go with integer. What is the output for this statement? It's in Java. I'm in the right place. System that out. So we're printing good and a space and then morning with an exclamation point. Now usually in Java you use system.out.println because you want each log or each print statement to be on a new line, but here they're just using print. So I think it's gonna be this one. What data type would best be used to record an email address? Okay, an email address is gonna have letters, it's gonna have characters, and so that's gonna make us go three, four, it's one of these two. An email address usually has multiple characters, it's not just a single character. That is gonna make it a string. Oh gosh, this one is bigger. All right, we have some variables that are integers. We have some if statements that depend on the values of these integers. So a is greater than 12 and is that true? Yes, because a is 14, b is less than negative, 14, B is negative 15, that is less. So both of these will evaluate to true. And then 22 and 11, this last one's false because 22 is greater than D. So that means yay will not be printed. Since this is an else if statement, we do not run this following block. So that means yay, that's not it. D, which is 11, 11 minus 20 is a number that is not negative nine. Negative nine is less than B, negative 15, that's not true. So then A is 14, plus 12 is 26. 26 is greater than C, so, which is 22. 14 plus 12, yes. So this is vexing. That's what I think it's gonna be. Since it's an if else clause, that means this last statement won't be printed because it's if, yeah. Cool, okay. What are the types of operators? Relational and assignment are arithmetic and logical, conditional and increment or decrement. I think all of these are. I know assignment is an operator because you have the equal sign, you assign something to a variable. Relational, it's like greater than, less than, equal to. Logical, I know is definitely one because that's like and or not. I think those might be relational too. And then arithmetic, that's like the plus operator, the subtract operator. I ain't gonna leave those. Ah, this is tricky. So this is just like the other one, but now we have the print L in. So it should print good and then morning on a new line, but none of these options show that. So I am unsure which one it is because it should be good space and then morning on a new line the closest one to that. Okay, there's a bug in the test because like one and four are the same option. So it's gonna be one or four. Um, we're gonna go with four and hope for the best. Question seven, consider the code below. Uh, so this is like another math problem that we saw before. So we had B mod D, so B is 17, mod D, which is seven. So the mod operator, I have a video on it, check it out, but it's basically, if I were to divide 17 by seven, what would the remainder be? And so the 17 divided by seven would be two because you got 14, seven times two is 14. 17 minus 14 is three. So this first number is gonna be three. And then A divided by B, so A, which is 24, divided by B, 17. That's gonna be one because 17 goes into 24 one time. So three plus one, B is now four. So we have A, that's 24, mod B. B, the new value of B is four. 24 divided by four is six with zero remainder. 
So A is now 0, because mod is all about the remainder. 0 minus 12 is going to be the new value of A, so that is negative 12. Cool. Okay. Which of the following is a valid variable declaration in Java? So you have the data type first. The name of it cannot be the data type. That, that would error. It also has to be one word. You can't have spaces in it. So it's either two or one. I'm unsure. I've never tried to put a one in front of my variable, but I know this first option is correct because this is usually what I would see in Java. This question is also kind of wrong because like this is really a variable declaration and initialization because we're initializing it with zero, the value. So we're going to go with this one. All right. Which of the following declares a string array of size i? So I know it's not 2 because this is setting the value of the array to be a string. And that's, you can't do that. That would not compile. This one would also not compile because the array brackets need to be near the data type and not the variable name. I think it is 3 because this does not compile. What it should be is like string square brackets s semicolon. So this i thing shouldn't be there. And that is why 3 is correct. What are the ways to create string objects in Java? You can use the new operator, so new string, and then in those parentheses add a value. Then you have string literal and new operator. This looks correct. Wrapper classes, pool constant. This is probably thrown in to confuse people, but the string little, literal is where you actually say letters and quotes, and the new operator you go like new string as you would with any new object, and then you would put in likely some kind of string. All right, how many questions are there? Hopefully we're near the end. So a double can hold decimal values, but an integer has to be a whole number. So an int can be negative, so one is false. An int can hold real numbers. A double can hold only imaginary numbers. This has nothing to do with imaginary or real. An int can only hold integer values. Double can hold any number, including decimals. This is kind of true because, but like, this is true, but it's also not true. Technically a double can hold decimals, but there's a range in like the number of decimals that it can hold. Like it can't hold any possible number you think of. If you add enough decimals to that decimal double number, you're gonna go out of the range that Java, there's like a max integer value and there's a max decimal value. It can't hold every, like it can't hold infinity or something. Yeah, and then an int can hold all values whereas the double can hold, or can only store two digit values. So three is the correct answer, but it's, Mm, okay. What data type would be the answer to the expression x is less than 5? That would be a boolean because either x, it's 6, it's 10, it's some kind of number, but the output of this is going to be true or false. Is 10 less than 5? Is 8 less than 5? Like that's a true or false statement. And a true or false is a boolean. What is the difference between system.app.println and system.app.print? They have no difference. There is a difference, and it has to do with whether a new line is printed at the end or not. System.app.println is only for beginners. X, no, they're for everybody. It's it's a program. <laughs> System.app.print throws the cursor to the next line after printing the desired result. Nope, it is println that does that. And so println, like ln is like line, so it's another line that's going to print after that. How many are there? <laughs> Nx equals 2, double y equals 2.1, float z equals 3.0, and then we create an int out of x, y, and z. Okay, so that means it, whatever the answer is, since it has to be an int, it needs to be a whole number. So that automatically eliminates 2 and 4. And if we multiply these, we have x times y, which is x times y equals 4.1, so that gives us 7.1. But we're kind of doing this converting to int, so it has to be an integer. So I'm gonna go with seven, and I'm gonna stand stand on that. Int i equals 55, j equals three. So 55 divided by three, 18. And since division only takes the, like since it's division, it doesn't do the full division, it only gives us that full number, that plus three, and then you divide that by five. So I'm gonna go with four. 
What is the value of J at the end? Do, do you get a calculator on this test? That would be nice. And I'm gonna give myself a calculator. So we have D times 100. The value of D is 4.55 times 100 plus D2, which is 3.75. So the value, because we're converting it to an int, is 458. So we are gonna do that. All right, consider the code below. So we have an integer array with a bunch of numbers that look the same. It looks like we're using that to determine the length of this Boolean array. So we'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine slots in this array. Then we're gonna iterate through our integer array and we're gonna set the value of the thing that's in this bool's array to true or false depending on a value in the value array. So the first value is 841. 841 is greater than 20. 841 mod 2 does not equal zero because it's not even. If it was even, then it would be zero. So the first one is gonna be false. If we kinda look down here, speed ahead, we're only gonna print out the values so the numbers where this equation is true, because we have this if bool statement, if the Boolean for that given value is true, we're gonna print out the value. So that means we're looking for numbers that are greater than 20 and values that are even in this array, and that's what's gonna be printed out. And so these first two do not, or this first one doesn't work because it's not even. Negative 14 and one do not work because they're not greater than 20. 41 is odd, so that one's false. 49 is odd, false. 149 is odd, so false. 14, 14 is not greater than 20, so we get a false. 148 is even and is greater than 20, and that's the only one that's printed out, and so we'll choose that one. Next question. Expressions cannot contain variables of different types. True or false? So I think of an and, I think of an or, I think of a not, I think of an addition, I think of some subtraction. Now this is weird. Sometimes true and sometimes false, those are actually the same thing. So this makes me think it has to be true or it has to be false. And so I'm gonna say it has to be true because it needs to be true or false. And I know expressions can contain variables of different types. String, str, hello, and then some indexing here. So indexing starts at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four. So it'll be O. And we'll finish the quiz. How did we do? We did not do good. Let's take a look at the ones we got wrong. Okay. This is the one where it was like, do I choose one or do I choose four? Because they're the same thing. And I chose wrong. So I don't count that one as wrong. It looks like we got all of these right. This one I did not know. Let's pull up a terminal and try to run it. If you ever need a quick IDE, you go to JDoodle and they have all these different like IDEs with different languages and they let you just paste something in. So the fact that there wasn't like an error answer choice, yeah, so I'm not gonna count that. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Happy coding.